Hey guys, welcome back to Lick Branch Farms. In today's video, we're gonna start seed for one of the most heat tolerant vegetables that we grow here on the farm. And it's also one of the most sought after during the hot summer months. This plant will thrive through the humidity and the 100 degree weather that we have around here, and it'll keep producing all the way till frost. And I'm gonna tell you what that vegetable is right after this. Welcome back guys. If you live in the south, you probably already guess what plant or what vegetable I'm talking about. You know, even some of you northern guys, they all probably already know yourself, but we're talking about okra. Okra is one of the most heat tolerant vegetables that we grow here on our farm. Doesn't matter how hot it gets, those plants will still thrive. And it seems like the hotter it gets, the more they produce. It's also one of the only vegetables that we grow that you can take very little care of and it still thrives. Okra is one of those plants you can plant it in some of the poorest soil you got and it will still, I mean, it still keeps on keeping on. It's also one of those plants you don't have to fertilize that much. I know that sounds odd, but you have to, you don't have to fertilize it like you would tomatoes and beans and things of that nature. You fertilize it on a schedule and you keep to it and you stay off the nitrogen a little bit because the more nitrogen you put to it, the bigger plant you're gonna get, the less pot production you're gonna see. And for us, okra is an added value crop, meaning that we process okra to sell in other forms. And we'll sell it uh, as pickled okra. We'll sell it by the pound. We'll sell it in 10 pound bags and 20 pound boxes. Um, so yeah, we utilize a lot of okra throughout the summertime. When everything else seems to be going downhill, okra just keeps thriving. And for many years, I planted just the heirloom varieties. I planted uh, Clemson Spineless mainly and it did okay. I mean, it was one of those okras that had a very good flavor to it. We harvest our young, you know, three inches or so is about as big as we want it to get. And, uh, you know, we, we planted that for a long time and we sold a lot of okra that way, but we were looking for something that was more productive. We was looking for a hybrid that would actually, you know, we could put on two or three pods at one time and still harvest. So what I've got here today, and it's the first time I planted this okra is uh, jambalaya. And I've heard a lot of good things about it. And I'm gonna go through the process that I use to get my okra seed ready to put in trays. Now we do start our okra in trays and we transplant it once it gets so big. Normally by now we would already had it done, um, but we're kind of running behind, but it's still, we still got plenty of time. So we're gonna get this, these guys in the trays today. Go ahead and get these guys started. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna share with you the process that I use and what's been working for me over the years. And Jason's gonna help me out here for a minute. What I have here is my okra seed. There's 3000 okra seed in here and they're soaking in water. Now they've been in water for 24 hours. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give you the ability to see the bad seed, plus it's gonna break down that hard exterior shell on okra seed. I mean, you all felt it how far, it, it's like rocks. But I've soaked it for 24 hours. We're gonna drain it off real quick. Jason gonna hold the bag up and move your feet. We need to do this over a bucket. <laughs> all right, so Jason got his bag, gonna hold it over this bucket. What we're gonna do is strain the water off of these. It's okra seed. Get all of it out. Let's try to squeeze it a little bit so we can get most of that water out of it. Got it. Alright, that's good. Alright. So we got all right, so we got our seeds, we got them ready to put in a tray. Jason's gonna put some dirt in these trays. He's gonna level it up real good and get us a good seed bed going in this tray here, and then we're gonna start planting some seeds. Pushing around, get it all the way to the outside edges. Pick off anything big, you see. All right, you'll need a little bit more. All 
All right, so Jason's got some dirt in the trays and he's gonna go through now and start dimpling. You can see what he's doing. Basically, he's going through there and putting his fingers in there and he's making a dimple in each one of these cells. Don't go too deep. Um, you can plant okra seed up to an inch and it'll still come up and it's gonna come up surprisingly fast. I would imagine after priming these uh, okra seeds that they will germinate in less than three days. That's just me knowing how fast normally it will if you don't prime it. But being it's already primed, I can see this okra being up. Today's Tuesday. I can see it being up by Friday. All right, while Jason's working on that end of the tray, I'm going to start on this end and go through here and dimple this. So we can go ahead and get this one out of the way. If my calculations are correct, it's going to take nine of these 338 cell trays to plant those 3,000 seeds. And I know there's more than 3,000 in there, but just doing the math, it's going to take those nine trays to start all the seeds we got. All right, guys, so we're going to dump the seeds back out in that tray again. And Jason's going to go through and plant these things one at a time. One in each cell, and you can see that's basically it. They're just wet. So, go ahead and let me see one of these. I'm sure what I'm talking about. You can see if you can see that real close, you can see to where that seed has already started to crack. That outer casing has already cracked on that seed. That's a good thing. That's going to speed your germination up. I'm going to start on this end, Jay. So, one at a time. It's a long process, but. I'm telling you, you'll be glad you did because we can put it in the germination chamber in here and we can have these things pop in just a day or two. If we had to rely on the temperature outside, it might take a little longer simply because it cools off at night. But I'm telling you, okra likes it hot. The hotter, the better. All right, guys. So that's the first one. Um, all the seeds are in. I know they're kind of hard to see, but you can look. Jason got two in that one. Kind of hard to see, but there they are. Jason's going to go through. He's gonna sprinkle a little bit of dirt on top just to cover them up. All right. And I'm gonna fill them in. All right, that's the first one out of the way. Jace picked that up. We're going to take it outside. Jace is going to bring this thing outside and set it. I don't know where to set it, Jace. We got so much mess going on around here. Um, tell you what, just set it out here on the ground for right now. All right, we'll set it over there for now. We're going to have to water everything in when we get all the other trays. We got eight more of them things to do. We may get them done to seed and we may not. But we'll definitely get halfway through them anyway. All right, so that's the first one. We got eight more to go. Let's get busy. All right, guys. So we got all nine trays done. My help had to leave. His mama got off work and she come picked them up. So he had to leave about three trays into this. But there they are. It's nine three thirty-eight of jambalaya okra, and I'm gonna water them in really good. And I am gonna put them in the germination chamber and turn the heat up to about eighty-five degrees and let them go ahead and germinate. Um, We've been having some nighttime temperatures in the low to mid 50s here for the last week or so. Um, not saying that they wouldn't grow, but you got to remember now, okra is a heat loving plant. It loves hot weather. Now anything, um, I'm going to say mid 50s and below, it really doesn't thrive. It really doesn't want to grow. So wait until you have what we call barefoot weather. Um, you can run around outside and not have to worry about it getting cold. And the nighttime temperatures have kind of sustain yourself into the mid to upper 50s uh, low 60s at least before you try to plant it outside it's just really not going to do well until it gets hot until the soil temperatures get really really warm so for us in our region you know okra season is usually between late june early july until frost i mean you're going to get some um spells in there to where it doesn't want to put off like it normally would and once it starts turning cool and I'm gonna say drops below 70 degrees, 
it'll pretty much stop. I mean, it'll 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 make what blooms are left on it, but it'll pretty much cease to bloom and put on any more pods after it has established itself. All right, guys. So we got all of these trays watered in. There's nine trays there. There's a little over three thousand okra plants, and I've got to get them in here on the germination map. And go ahead and get them on some heat i imagine they'll probably be germinated in three days or less um that's just how fast this stuff grows but yeah this is where i'm gonna call a wrap for this video but you don't want to miss the next one because we're going to be starting more jalapeno peppers i got a new variety we're going to test and we're also going to be starting our second round of tomatoes this is going to be our heat set variety these are going to be the varieties that's going to get us through the hottest part of the year and i'm going to tell you why and i'm going to tell you the difference in the heat set varieties in that video so you don't want to miss that one but if you missed the video whenever we did our first planting of tomatoes, I'm going to put a link to it up here. Go back and watch that one. And if you found anything useful or you found anything entertaining or you just want to know more about our farm, click this subscribe button over here in the corner. As always, guys, we appreciate you stopping by. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.